Once upon a time, there was a group, a group of mysterious people whose names were lost to time, but their legacy remains to this day. There was a game, Python Civ it was called, with randomly generated countries, similar to this one. However, the results generated were something which set off the chain of events leading up to this video. First, there was a randomly generated currency, calling itself the Judy. Next, there was a randomly generated leadership title, the Immortal Administrator. But that wasn't the end. Another title was soon generated, Eternal Secretary. This was given to the Immortal Administrator's second in command, and unlike the position of Immortal Administrator, isn't hereditary. However, even this isn't the end. Soon I added a new feature, a dynasty system. And when the Galactic Empire from Star Wars with Sheev Palpatine in power was added, he died. But his heir was called Gerard Palpatine. One of the founders of Dewey Land misread the name as Gerald, but that wasn't an unexistent individual. Gerald is Gerard Palpatine's brother and arch nemesis. And finally, the claimant to the title of Immortal Administrator, a man whose name has been lost to time, once referred to a poppy. He was quickly corrected. That wasn't a poppy. That was a gillyflower. And so everything came together. The currency, the leadership, the nation symbol. It was time. Time to found a new nation. The Principality of Judea. So what are we waiting for? Why are we unnecessarily drawing things out? Let us get right to observing the struggles of the Principality of Judyland, from its founding to the end of time. Onward! Alright, let's get right to it. Load game? No. There is a save load system, by the way. I'll tell you about that later. Alright, national players? Well, we can have custom nations now, so we don't need to create our own number of players. So, that'll just be zero. Random nations. Okay, random nations. Uh, let's say Jude Lamb will conquer 50. Custom mission to the game, obviously. Italian League, Athens. Interesting. The Aztec Empire. Oh boy, don't want to get any Jude Lander sacrificed to their gods. The Principality of Jude Land. Oh boy, that's the one I want. The Mongol Horde. Oh boy, they're going to come in and attack us. No, thank you. The Roman Empire. Ha ha. We'll have to face off against the Roman legions. The Jude Landish. Jude Lander history is going to be great. The Peloponnesian League, oh, the Spartans, oh my goodness. The Kingdom of Troy, oh, I'm sure they'll fall to the Spartans or the Athenians eventually. And we can begin. As you can see, there's uh, slightly different things. There's uh, territory units mostly, that's the currently maybe different thing. So uh, let us build a firm. Also notice how I can just enter build firm as one command rather than entering build and entering firm. Uh, just to make things a bit faster, you know. Alright, so, what should we talk about first? Ah, oh, let's talk about a brand new addition to my game called The Culture System. Basically, the idea is each country start, you know, each country has its own starting culture and w with its own aspects, which, if other cultures come in through immigration or through you annexing another country and uh, there are people coming over to you, which will pick up new concepts or new aspects of culture or abandon their old traditions, you know. And there is, if we go into commands, there is an anthropology command. And if I just go into anthropology, good thing you asked the mortal minister. We have 175 people. Oh, the 175 people identify as Judy Lander. To look at each culture in more detail, yes. And now we can look specifically at each detail of the Judy Lander culture or whatever other cultures you have in your country. So. They commit every year an incredibly beautiful and interesting festival. The Jewelander people's focus is expansion. Very interesting. They paint themselves with intricate patterns of warm paint to intimidate the enemy. I'm sure that'll give them a bonus to military, as will them being a militaristic society. And they also believe themselves to be led by a great god known as Gerard Palpatine. So I'm looking forward to... Uh, uh, that uh, tradition being spread between different nations of uh, worshipping Gerard Palpatine and they use the gillyflower as a symbol of their nation's majesty yes also looking forward to that being spread and they also believe there is an evil equivalent of Gerard Palpatine known as Gerald yes of course 
the evil Gerald. And I also believe that they are led by an immortal administrator, which is a most honorable and glorious position, held only by Gerard Palpatine. And each duty lander immortal administrator is assisted by an eternal secretary, a non-hereditary position. So yeah, there you go. That's the culture system. That's basically the idea. And what's good is if you have more than one culture in your country, you can actually release them as a vassal state, or as a puppet state, whatever you want to call it. But you need to have more than one territory units, otherwise it won't make sense. It's a bit of an abstract way of showing how much territory you have. I mean, if you have one territory unit, you can't just release anything, so... At the start of the game, before you conquer anything, you'll be obliged to uh, let all those cultures in and not instantly expel them. But yes, uh, another thing we should cover is research. As you can see, we can also research food, research food, without having to enter things twice, and this also works for money. So let's just go into level 6 food and level 6 money, and I'll show you another command that's present. Research money, research money, research money. Okay, now that we have research food and research money, so that we can actually see what we can do, we can now research both as well, just to make things a bit easier, so... Okay, oh, uh, research both. Now I can just keep entering this, you know. And, uh, I can move another firm. It is game over the Empire of Dugoa, because they had a famine. Great to know. That's one less enemy. Let's build another firm. And another firm. And another firm. And another firm. And another firm. Oh, the Roman Empire is at a successful farming scene, and that's not good. They're feeding their legions. We cannot let them destroy Judealand. We need to strike them when we can. Alright, let's just keep building these firms. The Ranaloyan Great Senate has just dealt with a deadly plague. A hundred people have died because of it. Shame, really. And that's how you basically uh, get rid of cultures. Or if they all die in a war, you know. But that's uh, about it. So, uh, let's wait until we get a million so we can build a business. There we go. We can build a business now. And at the same time, let us research both. Because we need those food and money bonuses. Also, I don't know if I mentioned this in my previous video, but food research units for it costs 100 times how many, however many tiers you have to actually increase the tier by one. So if I have 25 food units right now to get to 26, it would cost me 2,500, and the same for money because it's also at 25. But that means that at zero, the first upgrade is free. So yeah. Nothing like a good free 1% bonus to every to food and money, isn't it? Okay, so let's build another business. Alright. The Kamino of Salaski land is in a farming season. Alright, good for that. Oh wow, we have 1,577 people now. That was quite quick. Alright. So, research. I talked about research. I talked about culture. Also, each culture aspect actually gives you a bonus, so it's not just a useless cosmetic thing. There is also a custom nation maker, uh, which is, uh, you know, which you can use, and uh, I will upload that together with my game in a zip file. The link is going to be in the description, by the way. And uh, you can make your own nations with their own custom culture aspects, and which will give you your own custom bonus and so on. You can also, when you're actually creating your own player nation in the actual game and not outside, add your own culture aspects, but those will be purely cosmetic. And uh, the AI will also, or uh, not AI, but just random chance for, you know, non-player created cultures will create randomly generated aspects of culture. So it will take a noun and a verb, for example, I don't know, uh, bow shooting, and uh, you know, put those together, and that's a good tradition for it. And we'll have, it won't have a substantial bonus. It might be dis disadvantageous, but still, nevertheless. Yeah. So there you go. What else can I say? Yeah. And for as far as cultures are concerned, that's uh, about it. So let's continue. And it would also be a good thing to see if the buy command works. Yes, it works. Basically, what happens is there is now a market system where you can sell, you know, lots of spare uh, food or slaves or in the future a different thing, which I'll tell you about later, and uh, other countries can buy it. There will also be sort of procedurally generated, uncontrolled sort of uh, items like these unbelievable laborers. They're, they don't belong to any country. They're just uh, on the market, you know? 
So if I felt like buying 3,096 slaves, it would cost me 87,996 Judies. Actually, I might consider that. Nothing like raising Judyland's population substantially. Luckily for me, they uh, instantly assimilate into the Judylander culture. It's not like we have to deal with any slave cultures or anything, so that's good. So that's the market system, and you can also sell if you like it. So how about if I sell 25,000 food? The name of the product, what should I call it? The Immortal Administrator's Gilly Flour Flavored Potato Chips. There you go. And the cost of the product, oh boy, 500 million. Don't worry, the cost will decay over time, and by decay over time, you will divide by two from time to time. And the amount of food you have will also decrease, because, you know, food doesn't last forever. Kind of logical, you know? So yeah, that's that. So now we just wait for someone to buy. <laughs> Nobody has that money, so they'll never be able to buy it, but we can only hope. And uh, we can build another business, so that's always good. Yeah, now that we covered the market system, we just have to wait. All right, we have five million. We could build a laboratory, just to get that free research. And why don't we build another? No, instead of building a laboratory, let's do the next thing, which will bring me right well onto my next part. War. The war system. Now, who should I declare war on? Hmm. Lenium. Sounds a bit like on the Lenian Great Confederation. All right. And now, if we look in our commands, we have the invade command. No longer can you just invade and take land. Now, you actually have to declare war first. Nevertheless, let's invade Lenium. All right, the Principality of Judyland has invaded and successfully occupied the Lenium Great Confederation. The wonderful Duke of Lenium has gone into hiding and the government has capitulated. Yes! We have won the war. Now, we must make our demands. We can either annex them, and they'll just become part of our country. All of their buildings will go to us. You know, all of their food, all of their research, if they have any. All of their territories, so we'll have two territory units, because I'm guessing they didn't conquer anybody else before us, but also people of their culture, and that might be problematic. But I actually don't mind. But we can also puppet them, and they'll be a vassal state that'll be servicing us, giving us 10% of their income, and also we'll have a shared research, and when it comes to forming military alliances, which is also a new thing, they will be obliged to join us. And also they will give us uh, extra points in peace conferences because you only have 1,000, and if you capitulate, you have 500. And it costs 1,000 to annex something and 500 to puppet something, so how about that? And each puppet gives you plus 500 points, so... Not sure which one to go for, but I'll annex. Because I feel like... Because I can always release them as a foreign culture, you see. Maybe I just want them to, you know, slightly become more desirable, get rid of the bad traits. So I'll just annex Lenium. And I'll just done. The results of the Judylander Lenium Peace Conference. The Lenian Great Confederation was annexed by the Municipality of Judyland. Hail the Immortal Administrator! Lenium is ours! How about Nuristan? Invade Nuristan! I mean, we weaken them by stealing all their money. Nuristan. Invade Nuristan. They might very easily get destroyed though. Okay, so I think we might have just sacked them to the ground instead of actually conquering them, so there goes the association of Nuristan. Bye-bye, looks like we'll just have to keep looking for stronger enemies, I suppose. So, let's invade Edovium. Well, that was easy. Let's puppet Edovium. Done. The Gillyflower Protectorate of Edovium has been puppeted by the Principality of Judyland. Yes! Now, there are new commands. Some of these might not be visible yet. There is Assist. You can give your vassal states things like buildings, money, food, and then you can colonize them and send people of your culture to them. You can also annex them if their primary culture is the same as yours, and you can release them and just make them another independent state. Form alliance if I have enough money. Yes, it costs 25 million, I believe. So what should I call my alliance? The Pact of the gilly flower. How about that? Yes! Okay, and as you can see, the gilly flower protector of Adolphium has joined the pact of the gilly flower. The lands of its overlord, the principality of Judyland. So they are obliged to join us. They will never be able to leave it now until we've given them independence. Tottekostan. Invade those. Okay, invade. Okay, they just got destroyed again. Alright, so now we have one more turn. 
We got 100, over 100 food and 100 research units. And as you can see, there are new things. There are equipment factories, equipment units, an army of zero soldiers, of which zero mobilized, and our army is 14% trained. And now, we can buy mercenaries. So, hmm, who should we buy? That's a lot of mercenaries. Why don't we buy superior soldiers? The Silaskilandans have uh, decided to invade. We have to mobilize. Mo yes, we have to mobilize as many troops as we can. And uh, training level, it's only 31%. And that means the soldiers will attack with only 31% of the possible power they have, but that didn't stop us from conquering uh, Selasky land. So let's see what... Oh, we can satellite. That means we can release foreign cultures as our own vassal states. Satellite. The Tecapemian culture. No, thank you. I will just... Uh, what should I do? Well, I'll annex the Selasky Landans. And I'll be done. The Commonwealth of Selasky land was annexed by the Principality of Judaland. There we go. I'm very happy. And let's take a look at their anthropology. The Delian League is formed in military alliance called the Athenian Pact. Good to know. Good to know. Alright. Now, what should we do? Obviously, we'll declare another war on Gilohium. You're my next victim. <gasps> They're the Athenians, Guru. Oh boy. Mobilize. I'll annex Athens and I'll puppet Gilohium. There we go. Oh, the Spartans. Ah, oh, they want something. Oh, I need to mobilize, of course. 587. Invade. Sessium. <laughs> Annex Ayateum for some reason. Done. Mongolia. I'm going to conquer the Mongolians. Invade Mongolia. You can only mobilize 10% of your army at once. Invade Nelestesia. Okay. Annex Nelestesia. Done. Uh, war. S Janaum. Invade. Okay, now let's annex a bunch of people. Actually. I'd rather puppet them. You can also enter vassals and actually see all the information about them. So you'll have pretty good stuff. Yep. Let's keep fighting. The Refetian Accord. I'd rather take out the big ones. Astenetoland, because they're in part of a big alliance. Okay. Astenetoland. Conquer. Annex. Ranolom. Done. Heh <laughs> heh. Invade. Emophom. Oh, yes. Mobilize. Five, five, six, six, eight. I hope my culture is doing fine. Yep, Judalanders are still going strong. They're top. Nope, the Astenitolandish ones are the top, actually. Invade. Gunineu. Yes! Puppet. Gunineu. Puppet. Sevemungistan. And that's done here. And mobilize. 559. Invade. Hold on. Oh, yeah, we. One of our. Uh, the U.S. Representative of Adovium has already done it for us. So, you know, it's great. Refetium. Done. Right, war. Troy. Haha. -ha. Troy. Puppet. Troy. Done. Alright. Mobilize. Invade. Heady land. Gotcha. Heady land. Done. The New World Order under Judy Landish rule has been established. Now it's just a matter of waiting for cultural assimilation. After living amongst the Ranoloyan people for so long, the Salaskilandan people have picked up the tradition of militarism. Well, the, who's the Ranol Ranoldian people or whatever? Ah, that's right in our nation. So they're starting to assimilate into each other. Alright, I hope this does well. Let's keep going. Let's keep observing. Alright. The Itat Kuyan set to abandon war paints. That's not good. The Judylanders are interested in war paints. Okay. You have after Gilohium? Ah, they've dealt with a daily plague, lost a lot of people, so why don't we just give them some colonists? Heh <laughs> heh. I just hope they don't die off instantly. It's the anthropology. Let's take a look. That's 2,000 people identified as Judylander. Right, okay. The Romans are just fake Romans at this point, but who cares, I suppose. <coughs> Let's keep going then. Alright. Whoa. The Romans have just lost. <laughs> Colonize Rome of a thousand. <laughs> so, anthropology. Let's take a look. <laughs> let's see in a few turns. Maybe the population will actually grow. Alright, let's keep going. Alright. Okay. The Judelander people have picked up their tradition of sword killing. 
no! It's not supposed to be like this. It's the Judy Landers that are supposed to dominate, not the other way around. You were supposed to destroy them, not join them. They picked up their tradition of sword biting. No! Ab no! Abandoned expansionism. No! Ugh. This is too much for me. What's the biggest culture? What's the biggest culture group? Astenetolandish. Release culture. Astenetolandish. Yes. Don't care about them. Okay, maybe. Okay. Decided to. No! They've abandoned their tradition of worshipping Gerard Palpatine. This is. This is not good. This is not good at all. Let's see what. Oh no. The Julian Landers are degenerating. This is not good. Oh no. The... No! No! No. Ah. And they also practice the Ebellian tradition. Oh goodness. Not good. Not good at all. Yes! Yes! After living amongst the Judelander people for so long, the Celeskillan people have picked up the tradition of gilly flower symbolism. Yes! I realized. We need to do something dangerous. We need to release the Rana... Ranaloians. Because they're too dangerous. Yes! The Yetian people have picked up the tradition of Geraldism. Very good. So you see, they're becoming assimilated. I'm very happy about that. Well, it's good to know that the Judelanders are now once again a majority culture, despite the fact that, well, they've lost their most important factor, which is the veneration of Gerard Palpatine. Oh, yes! After living amongst the Judelander people for so long, the Tatikuian people have picked up the tradition of yearly festivals. You see, they're learning something from us. <laughs> we just had a deadly plague. 442,000 people died, and this resulted in the Onazostani culture being wiped out. The Principality of Judea has dealt with another deadly plague, and 521,501 people have died, and the Itatikubian culture was destroyed because of it. Yes! After living among the Judea people for so long, the Celeskill land and people have picked up the tradition of immortal administrators. So let's just take a look at the anthropology and just see how everything's going as far as traditions go. So the Judea blah blah blah. Shame they don't venerate uh, Gerard Palpatine anymore. Okay. The Evelyan people practice a tradition called stone killing. Oh, why is it Evelyan? But anyway, they avoid all contact with the outside world. Put a maspian. Okay. Use yes, yeah, you see, they use the gilly flower as a symbol of their majesty and are led by immortal ministers. After living amongst the Judelander people for so long, the nonetheless, you're using the Judelander's degenerated traditions. Goodness me. Goodness gracious. Okay, not good. Yes. The Ayatayan people have decided to abandon the disgusting tradition of chicken licking. So as you can see, the cultures are becoming more and more normal, and I'm very happy about that. Yes! After living amongst the Judelander people for so long, the Nelstessian people have picked up the tradition of immortal administrators. You see? You see they're getting closer and closer to becoming assimilated. Ah, they picked up the tradition of sword killing. The Celeskillanders. Why? Why? Ah, the Judelanders. Ha. Ah. After living amongst the Julianic people, some of the Nelestesian Ayatayan people have picked up the tradition of war paints. Good, 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 good. Now they will be painting gilly flowers on their chests or something. Or whatever they would paint on their arm or something, I don't know. Yes! The Nelestesian Ayatayan people have picked up the tradition of Judelander yearly festivals. Very good. After living among the Judelander people, some of the Nelestesian Ayatayan people have the gilly flower symbolism. Well, now the Nelestesian Ayatayan have been basically becoming Judelanders at this point. Which is good to know. After a very long time of living with and assimilating into the Judelana culture, the Nelestesian Ayatayan people living in Judelana no longer identify themselves as pure Nelestesian Ayatayan. Henceforth, a new branch of their culture exists, the Judelana Nelestesian Ayatayan culture. Okay, this is almost the final step. The and Nelestesian Ayatayan people picked up a tradition of militarism. Very good, they're going to be very identical to us soon. Ah, the Julian and the Stesian people have put up a tradition of eternal secretaries. Good, you must never forget about the eternal secretaries. After a long time of living with and assimilating into the Judelander culture, the Judelander and the Stesian people no longer identify themselves as even Judelander and the Stesian They now identify themselves as fully Judelander. And that means... So we are now united. There are 836,796 pure Judelanders. So now it is time to set our sights on Rome and populate them with 100,000 Judelanders. Let's hope that works. Right, so this is going to take a very long time, so I'll just inform you bit by bit as, how, as to how everything goes, and I'll just uh, let you know when I'm able to annex each country due to cultural integration, so I'll see you then. Alright, the 
Gilliflower Protectorate of Ito have 108,445 people, and all of them are Judelanders, so annex Ito. After full cultural integration, the Principality of Judelanders annex the Gilliflower Protectorate of Ito. Well, there you go. We're taking it. Continuing on. Unbeknown to me, it turns out somehow the Judelander people have inherited mass orgies. Goodness me. Judelanders. Why? Why? You were meant to destroy the Geraldism, not join them. Goodness me. Anyway, back to work. Alright, I can now annex the Gilliflower Protectorate of Troy. They've lost all their Trojans. <laughs> we have annexed them now. One less. Back to work. Another protector we can annex. Gilohium. Soon, there will be a unification of all people in the Judelander flag and banner. But that will come at a price. The price of the loss of Gerard. The price of orgies. The price of... Let's see what else they have here. The price of... Sword killing and sword biting. Goodness me. Moving on. All right. After a long lag, we finally managed to return. So. Ha, ah, we can come annex Rome now. So let us do that. One last nation. Let's keep going. Okay, we can annex Adovium now. We can annex Etumia. Adum is now in our grisp. grasp. There are only four more countries left for us to conquer. Ranaloi can now be annexed into the Principality of Judeland. Sevimugistan can now be annexed. Astinetaland, the penultimate nation for Na Judeland to culturally conquer, is ready. It is done. The last nation, the Gilliflower Protectorate of Genome, has been annexed after full cultural integration. The Principality of Judeland was the last nation standing, and Judelander was the culture all other cultures assimilated into. Unfortunately, many things happened. The veneration of Gerard Palpatine was lost to time. The Judelanders degenerated and began to commit mass orgies. And they began to bite their swords. And there was another tradition. And they began to kill their swords, even though swords are unkillable because they're not alive. But there's nothing we can do. Nothing we can do about that. At least the Judelanders won. At least there are eternal secretaries and immortal administrators. At least people still fear Gerald. But nevertheless, that's it. There are a few other things that I need to inform you about, such as the save load system. Basically, if you didn't finish the game, you can enter the quit command, and it will ask for an input of a name for a save game, and then you can just enter whatever name you want for your save. And then when you open the game up again and ask your load game, you say yes, and enter that name of the save, and ta-da, it'll be in that game again. And that's it. Anything else I forgot? No, no, nothing. It doesn't, that wouldn't seem so. Thank you. Goodbye.